That's the longest I've read in at least 15 years. Is it true that you have Dan read all your books to you and yes. you pretend to read them before I fall asleep? <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you pay Dan $14.99 a month like Audible? Yeah. To have him read all of the books yeah, to you called, at 2x like The last pace. book yeah. I read with my eyes oh my was God. Holes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, here's the thing. Was that middle school? That is a known fact amongst design. He's, oh, yeah. he's name dropped the, the book of holes often, dude. Stanley Yelnats? <laughs> Yelnats, Yelnats no, sounds like you're saying character. his name backwards. It is. Um, Tyler, we got to film a vlog is Stanley right backwards. about how to make a podcast. LOL. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we're filming a vlog, Dan. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dan. Okay? Dan has been my personal assistant for, come on, eight years. Close, seven. Seven years. Like my brother, trust him with my life. I just don't necessarily trust him to get lunch fast, but he will get lunch. Anyway, since I started a podcast, Dan has evolved massively into pretty much running the entire podcast. So he learned Pro Tools, he learned how to do little audio filters, take out all of my mistakes, my ums and yas and all that bullshit. How annoying is that? Annoying. Okay, thanks. He uh, learned how to set up this whole setup here. He learned it all. Very proud of him and he also helps with booking guests and doing all that. But a lot of people ask me how to start a podcast and they, or they say that they want to start a podcast but don't, including close friends of mine who are more than capable and have plenty of money to buy all the fancy equipment. So my goal today is to tell you exactly how to do it from both a practical standpoint to a conceptual standpoint. First part of that lesson is when I first started doing a podcast, essentially, we just went and bought two crappy crappy microphones. So all you need is two mics. This would be my suggestion. There's a million ways to do it. Two mics that have XLR input output, right? Go buy a handy recorder, H2. What's the cheapest one? H2. I, it's I like a hundred bucks, right? You get two inputs. That's what the two is for. You literally put a SD memory card in it. You plug in the two crappy microphones, you hit record and you have a podcast. So for anyone uh, complaining that they don't have money for the equipment and all of that stuff. I don't know, man. It's, it's, I think any of you out there can scrounge up a couple hundred bucks, piece this thing together and start recording a podcast. Now, over the time, obviously we evolved. We went from having the two crappy mics and a computer, and now we have a pretty cool setup. It's still not like a Joe Rogan type thing, but it's two really good mics. These are the Shure SM7B microphones. After a few tries, this is what we ended up going with. Now, it's really important why we ended up going with them. Number one, Michael Jackson recorded Thriller on these microphones. That's a fact. That's the fact, Jack! And you can tell everyone that comes in that fact, and it makes you look really cool and knowledgeable. But most importantly, they're really good at taking out all of the sound from around the room and from moving the mics. A lot of times I have anxiety, I do this, I tap, I sometimes I tap on the chair, and you can hear all of that on a crappier mic. It's okay for starting out, but as you evolve, you should maybe think about one of these things. It also makes his life a little bit easier because he doesn't have to take out all of the sound of traffic and everything going on. On top of that, we evolved into some slightly better equipment, still relatively inexpensive, but really gets the job done and looks sounds super professional. So that is what Danny's gonna tell you. Danny, tell him what you bought. We bought this Scarlett. This is actually the Scarlett 18i8, and it's basically where all your microphones get plugged into. You can control the levels of it. You will need this to connect it to the computer since this runs off of USB. We have a headphone amplifier, which basically allows multiple headphones to be adjusted so you can hear. We use Pro Tools. Dan, this is what I wanna know. So you learned Pro Tools from scratch, right? Yeah, from like YouTube videos. Okay, so just give me this. For people who are gonna maybe download Pro Tools and go for it, what is the number one thing? Other than being able to, because you can YouTube how to use Pro Tools, you can YouTube how to set up two new tracks, put them on record, hit record, and go. Mm. What do you think the most uh, valuable thing was learning how to adjust levels, take out background, background noise? What really took it from like, oh, this guy knows how to press record to now you actually can produce a really good podcast? Basically using the inputs, which those you can do, you know, your compression, your EQ, yep. uh, the noise gate, all that type of stuff. And that's really what kind of helps with making it sound better. So that, that'd be like the best thing 
right. other than the simple. And is that something you have to download from somewhere else or it's on Pro Tools? It actually comes with Pro Tools. There's all the plugins and each one is, you know, something different. But yeah, you can just go on YouTube, figure out how to do that. What's the most annoying part about recording me podcasting for two hours a week? Um, I would say just the editing part, just taking out like the background noises or me saying yeah a lot. Yeah. Got it. So I should say yeah less and make it like easier. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Thank you, Jeff. Uh -huh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here is the next piece of advice that I have. A lot of people ask about like concept, right? Or what their show should be about, or maybe they have ideas, but those ideas sometimes are a little difficult. Right? My advice would be this. Number one, there is no rules. There's no advice I can give you that is 100% accurate because it's all opinion. And there are some of the biggest podcasts in the world that don't follow any specific formula or any of the advice that I'm about to give you. My advice would be this. Ask yourself what you are genuinely interested in and passionate about and what you want to sit and have hour long conversations about once a week and what you want to actively pursue and track down people to talk to once a week. When I started this podcast, my goal was I wanna interview young entrepreneurs and I wanna tell stories of young entrepreneur success. It since evolved way past that into athletes, into all sorts of different people and it's now just stories of self-made success across the board, the ups and the downs and the reality behind that. My goal is to humanize everyone's journey so that it seems attainable and realize that we can do it too, and then instruct everyone on how they actually accomplish what they accomplish. Now, your thing might be dog walking. Maybe you love dog walking and you wanna do a weekly podcast about walking dogs. My advice to you would be don't stay so niche in just dog walking because after about six weeks, you're gonna run out of people to interview that love dog walking and your podcast is gonna be screwed, you're gonna blame the world, and it's gonna be terrible. My advice would be do a podcast about dog health or maybe animal health or maybe some of the misconceptions about the way that people treat their pets and the way that people think that they keep their animals healthy, something like that. What you'll learn that I learned from my podcast is you, by signing up to do this, the really exciting part is you're signing up to constantly be learning yourself and constantly be making contacts yourself. And after a year of doing this, your contact list and your knowledge is going to be insane. So if right now you're not an expert and you think, well, I have no business um, doing this podcast because I'm not an expert, good, that's even better because your real job is you're curating experts and you're curating information and in the process, you yourself will become an expert. Trust me, there's such a massive transforming element to committing to a discipline like a podcast, focusing on one specific thing or area and just completely diving into it and seeing where it takes you. I personally, not only because of the engagement and reach and audience that it has got me uh, would recommend a podcast but way more than that it's the people that i've met the conversations that i've had the learning that i've done the things that people have told me on my podcast that i've been able to apply to my life and just all of the valuable valuable information so I literally can't stress it enough. I don't care if you think you have no viewers, you have no audience that's even ever gonna be there, start it, it's a good discipline. Tell people you have more listeners than you do. Do whatever you gotta do to just make this thing and give it a shot. It's an incredible technology where we're now, for 200 bucks, able to uh, create essentially a radio show and broadcast it to anyone who's willing to listen. Please take advantage of it. Lastly, Dan, can we talk about hosting services? My friend actually just texted me on my way in here today and said, hey man, I tried to upload my stuff to uh, Spotify, it didn't work. What hosting service do we use? What is the process for uploading it? And then what platforms does it feed to? Mostly what everybody uses is iTunes, obviously. You have iTunes. If you're looking for hosting, we use Libsyn. With that, you pretty much just go in, create an account. Uh, you don't have to be anybody special. You just choose you know, which plan you wanna go with. There's a way that you can funnel everything to where it distributes to all these other podcast uh, platforms like you know, SoundCloud, Stitcher, CastBox, Overcast, Google Podcast, things like that. But yeah, that's pretty much what you can do.
Great. So there it is. If you have any questions, any anything, please comment it below. I will get back to all of you. I couldn't recommend more starting a podcast. It's been a great thing for me and everyone else that I've met and talked to who's done it have felt really, really good about it. So there you go. There's my little two cents on podcasting. See you soon. The hardest part is figuring out what you want to master. Focus on your product. Can you tell somebody that they suck? You gotta just go. This is exactly what I want to do for a living. You can't even tell somebody that their breath is fickle.